In this video, we're going to talk about the offset function in Excel and how to use it. The offset function can help you to move from a reference cell to another cell in an array. So let's say our reference cell is going to be D6. Let's highlight that cell. Now let's use the offset function. So type in equal offset. Now our reference is cell D6. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the rows and not the columns yet. So let's say if I press 3 and then for columns 0. You don't have to worry about the height and the width for now. Notice what happens. So by selecting 3 for the rows section, I'm going to go down 3 rows and it gives me the value in cell D9 which is 37. Now for instance, let's say if I wanted to go down four rows. So I'm going to start with cell D6 again, but I'm going to go down four rows. It's going to give me this value, 55. Now let's say if I want to go up instead of down, here's what I can do. So to go up, I need to put a negative number. So let's go with negative 3. And so that will take me, I'm going up 3 units, so it takes me to cell D3, and I retrieve a value of 42. Now, in addition to going up and down, we can move left and right if we want to. So let's move to the right, starting with cell D6. So if you want to move to the right and you don't want to move up and down, put zero for the rows, but for the columns, put a number. And let's choose three for the column section. So now we're going to, starting from this cell, we're going to travel three units to the right. And this is going to give us the value in cell G6, which is 26. Now, if we want to go to the left, starting from cell D6, put a negative number. In this case, let's try negative 2. And so as you can see, this will take us two units to the left. And you could use a combination of going to the right, to the left, up and down, and so forth. For instance, let's say if we started from our reference cell D6 again, we can travel three units down and two units to the right. So this is three units down, two units to the right, and it takes us to cell F9, which is 51. Or, if we want to, we can go two units. Well, first, let's highlight D6. Let's go two units down, and let's travel one unit to the left. And so that's going to be 46. So starting from here, we go two units down, one to the left, and we get 46. So with the offset function, you can basically start from a reference cell and move anywhere to or anywhere in this array. You can move left, right, up and down, whatever you want to do. Now let's see what happens if we add the other two numbers. Let's start with D6 and let's move it, let's say, two units up and this time one unit to the left. Now what happens if we plug in zero? If you plug in zero, it doesn't work. But let's see if we plug in one for the height and for the width. In this case, it works. So we're going to travel one to the left and up two. And so this tells you that your array has a height of one and a width of one, which is basically the equivalent of one cell. But what happens if we change those numbers? So let's say if we start with D6, let's travel two units down and four units to the right. But let's make, actually let's travel one unit down and one unit to the right. And let's make the height two and the width two. So we traveled one unit down, one unit to the right. Now what happens is 
this is going to give us an array instead of just one cell. So we're going to have an array where the height is 2 and the width is 2. So what happens is we're going to get this array right here. We have uh, two rows, two columns. But the offset function doesn't know what value to give us because we have these four numbers and it doesn't know what to do with those four numbers. So when you're selecting an array, you need to couple the offset function with something else, such as the sum function or the average function. And let's go ahead and do that at this time. So I'm going to de-highlight this cell and my new starting cell will be cell B3. So I'm going to give that a, a blue color. Now let's go ahead and combine the sum function with the offset function. So I'm going to start with sum and then offset. Now let's start with our new reference cell B3 and I'm not going to move from this position. So I'm going to put 0 for rows, 0 for columns. So I'm going to stay at cell B3 for now. Now I'm going to change the height and the width. So my array is going to have, let's choose a height of 4 and a width of 1. And we need to close the parentheses twice. So what happens is I'm starting from here and I'm going to have a height of 4. And this is already a width of 1. If I had a width of 2, it would look like this. So this selection here has a height of four cells and a width of one cell. And what I'm doing is I'm summing those four numbers. So if I type in equal, sum, 15, 23, 36, 42, it gives me that value, 116. Now I can also do this. Let's say equal sum offset. Let's start with cell B3 and I'm not going to move from that position so we're going to put 0 and 0 for rows and columns but this time I'm going to select a height of 5 and a width of 3 and so I get this number so starting from this cell I'm going to have a height of 5 and a width of 3 and so what's happening is I'm taking the sum of those 15 numbers to confirm that answer, we can type in equal sum and just highlight that area. And as you can see, we get the same answer of 466. Now let's see what happens if we move from our starting position. So let's start at B3 again, but this time we're going to go down two rows and then Let's travel one unit to the right. Now for our height, let's choose a height of 4 and a width of 3. So looking at this, we went down 2 and 1 to the right. So this is starting from here, 1, 2 units down, 1 to the right. And then from this cell, cell C15, I mean that's C15, but C5, we chose a height of 4 and a width of 3. So let's select that, a height of 4 and a width of 3. So we're going to take the sum of those numbers. So equal sum height of 4, width of 3, and we get 515. So using the offset function, we can move from one position to another and take the sum or even the average of a table of values. So let's use the average function now. So average and then offset. Let's start with cell B3. And this time, let's move one unit down and three units to the right. And from there, I'm going to take the average of the numbers in this table with a height of 3 and a width of 3. So I get 51.7778. So I went one unit down, three to the right. So one unit down, and then one, two, three. Now let's highlight this cell. Let's give it a red color. 
And starting from there, I chose a table with a height of 3 and a width of 3. So this is the table I've chosen. So let's take the average of those numbers. As you can see, it gives us the same answer. So now you know how to use the offset function for dynamic calculations.